We came up from uh, Switzerland, some of us, yesterday. And as we were preparing for this, uh, some of my colleagues said, Oh, everybody else has a sustain chief sustainability officer. We don't have one. How could I mean, you get the answer? What will you say? And then somebody said, Well, it's pretty simple. The chief sustainability officer in Viking Cruises is me. <laughs> because, because in this day and age, you know, we are facing investment decisions of five billion dollars. I guess that's 50 milliarder kroner. Milliarder, yes. And we have to make sure we get it right. So we have spent a lot of time and effort on analyzing various alternatives. We have, we have very many projects going on that I'd like to share with you some of our thinking. And who knows, maybe we get it right, maybe we get it wrong. You know, that's, that's life in the, in the fast lane. But I'd like to share with you the, the, the observations we have to, to, to date. And if I can find a way of moving this one forward, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> but uh, it's probably this one. Yes. Perfect. So I thought I could, I could just start like all the teachers with a small exam for you guys. And you may think you're very clever. And I think I'm very clever too. <laughs> so the first question I have is, how much does the cruise industry, we have, the cruise industry has gotten lately. <laughs> if you live in Norway, you think we should be the Satan. <laughs> and then, so, so I said, how much do you think we contribute to global CO2 emissions? What do you think? Do, any guesses? Less than 4%. Okay. That's a good stat. In other words, not very much. Second question, how much does the cruise industry contribute to global warming? Not very much. How little? 2%. Okay. You're dead wrong. And I'll show you why. And it, I have some surprising. If I'm, if I'm wrong, then, then I'm wrong. If I'm right, you'll be surprised. So the answer is uh, cruising emits 0.13% of the world CO2. So it's not very much. Shipping as a whole is 2.5%. And cruising is 5% of that. And I could put the port of Oslo on this, and you will see it's not very much. The, the fact that it's virtually nothing doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything about it. So don't get me wrong. But I think we have to have a little bit of pers perspective. You can't depend on the cruise industry to solve all global warming issues. But we will do our damnedest, and I'll show you how much we have done as a company. Now the, the second question may surprise you a little bit. No, nobody has a better answer than on, the, on how much we contribute to global warming? Well, I have a source, because I'm, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm growing up. In my youth, I was a physicist. So I like, I like to study facts and uh, try to have facts on one side and then opinions on the other side. So we have done a lot of work on this, and we have had help from Sintef, and Sintef will be in the panel <laughs> later, later, on, later on today, so we'll see what. But I think, that, I think that this is correct. We have, we have talked to Sintef, we have talked to McKinsey, we have talked to Cicero, we have talked to Zero. I'm, I'm sure I forget some. So the answer is, when it comes to uh, global warming, shipping worldwide, contributes negatively to global warming. You didn't know that, did you? Shipping contributes to global cooling. Anybody disagrees? Anybody surprised? It's quite something, global cooling. And why is that so? It is so because there is something called the global warming potential, 20, you look at time horizons. I picked 20 years for two reasons. First, it gives the most dramatic picture, so that's a good reason for having it. But the other is, I, I think we have to solve the problem for the first 20 years before we can think about 100 years, which is the alternative. It still is negative for over 100 years, but it's not quite as uh, 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 quite as uh, quite as dramatic. But the whole the whole point is that uh, there's sulfur, 
when you in 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 the fuel oil that you burn, there's sulfur, and the sulfur does contribute to global cooling. It gives a shield over the earth to simplify it. And I, two nights ago, I read Bill Ga uh, uh, saw Bill Gates talk, and and you know he has a he has a partner called uh, Nathan Mewal, who has a big story about this. What the sulfur does. <laughs> Now, that's in terms of global warming potential. But the other side, of course, of sulfur is it bad for, the, bad for, the, for, for our health. And now comes what IMO has been doing. Uh, and they've been doing something. So I'll, I'll, I have some math here. So I don't want to need to bother you with the math. But this really is part of the math that we have done for various, various uh, things. It shows. Uh, it shows what the contents of uh, various fuel sources are. Sulfur in, in, in heavy fuel, in this case, contributes to a neg negative uh, greenhouse gases. I think it surprises some of you. And it surprised me when I got to it. You know, when you start off with something, you say, what ships should we have? And then you start to dig into this. And you, we have spent millions of dollars researching this. But okay. We can understand, you know, when you live in, we can understand, not only when you read the papers, but we can understand the negative reactions to cruising that we have seen. You see the monster ships, 5,000 passengers, uh, uh, many of them not spending a penny ashore. I'll not mention, I saw, you know, that you showed a certain company from a certain, a certain company from a certain country. I'll not mention the country, but we all know which one. Uh, uh, but you know, in Norway, we have a very, very famous statement about, about uh, these people coming in Bobili, in RVs, and not leaving a penny behind them. And I think that is the case with some of these. And you showed the right, you showed one of the right companies. Uh, they don't leave a penny behind. They spew out black smoke from old engines. And I happen to have an apartment down at Hugh Allman, and some of the ships play a company song as loud as you can on the, I think it's a foghorn, if it isn't, a, but it's really loud. It's very intrusive. They don't <laughs> And then of course we know about the local congestion, congestions. I mean, if you, uh, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Norway, it, and also it's quite easy because we can, it's, it's entirely easy to get around anywhere, unless you have a car. But, uh, but you know, it, it, it is, it is uh, congestion, uh, and we don't like that. So there are real issues. And you can say, as a resident of a city, you have to take these things into account. As a cruise ship operator, maybe you want to sort of rub it, push it under the heart a little bit, and ignore it, and so forth. But I think a port uh, is part of the city, and it has to be responsible for, it, for the people who own it and the for the voters. So I'd like to share with you uh, what action I think should be taken by cruise lines, by national and international authorities, including IMO. IMO has done a lot. And then what local, local harbors and cities can do. For cruise lines, it's very important that we select the right fuel platform. We have spent a lot of time on that. This is very complicated, as I said, now we're ordering ships to be delivered in 2027. It's uncertain what the right solution is. Shall one do what is scientifically right? And we know what scientifically right is, I think. Or should you do what is politically acceptable? And that's a conflict, I think. But I'm, I've, I've lived a long life, and I have a favorite say, statement. I'd rather be right than rich. It's nice to be both, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and so far it's okay. But I think one has to try to be right first, and then, and then uh, politically uh, correct afterwards. Uh, and I say we, as I said, we have studied this very carefully. A minute on what, what Viking is. We are in a very por fortunate position, because we are a young company. We started on the rivers, and I mean, we have and we, are, we must be one of the biggest customers of the Port of Amsterdam. Alma, I think you are in the audience here today. There you are. Everything good today? We are, we are one of the largest customers <laughs> of the Port of Amsterdam for our river ships. We have 72 of those. And we started out doing right things. 
and we talk about hybrid, they are, uh, they are hybrid, kind of. They're diesel electric, uh, we have shore power, uh, it's important when you are along the rivers of Europe. Uh, we have on the ships solar panels. You know, I, 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 I shall admit the solar panels don't really contribute to a lot of the energy on the ship. It's nice in the brochure to say that you are this and that. And I'll come back to batteries, which play a similar role for some of the cruise, cruise line number. It doesn't solve any problems, but it's nice in the brochure. <laughs> but I'll come back to that. Uh, then we have uh, ocean vessels. We have six of these. We have eight on order. And we are very fortunate because our first ships were delivered in 2015. So we don't have any history to defend. So we can do what's right. And quite frankly, we did what's right. We are small. We are we, from time to time, we are the proud carrier of the Norwegian flag. And Bjorn, I'm happy that, that you are here today too, so you can continue to ha have us in your basement. Uh, but I think we, we, are very, we have a nice company. What we have done, I think, for global, we have done things for global warming. Not because we have done it for global warming, but we like to. We saw what was coming, so when we designed the ships, we designed ahead. So to make two points, the third and the fourth point on the left-hand side, our fuel efficiency on these ships are 40. We, we consume 40 percent less fuel than ships that we compete against and are typically built around the year 2000. So of course that plays out in CO2 emissions too. And, and uh, as Feynman pointed out, the IMO EEDI, uh, I can even read now, uh, 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 we meet the standards. And, you know, those standards, they're tightening them because it's, an, and uh, the one I saw last is there is a standard for 2025 onwards. And for our type ships, we should meet a standard of 15.08. And already when they were designed in 2015, we were 12.58. So all our ships meet the EEDI uh, requirements, which we're very proud of. I don't think any other cruise line can say that. Uh, uh, local pollution, we comply with IMO 2020. We are ready to comply with IMO 2020. Marple Annex 6, no, IMO 2020 goes on sulfur, and Marple Annex 6 goes on nitrous oxides, to, to simplify. Uh, we have scrubbers, or they're called exhaust cleaning systems, and they come in two fashions. You can either have them closed loop or open loop. When you have open loop, you send them out in the harbor. If you have closed loop, you accumulate it, and then you put it ashore and dispose of it in the proper manner. But of course we saw very early on that you had to be close loop if you're going to be environmentally, uh, environmentally, environmentally safe. Uh, we have uh, um, SCRs as they're called, uh, I guess that from Yara, to remove NOx. We're fitted for shore power, waste systems and so forth. Um, and I think we're very proud, you know, the there's been a lot of talk about the uh, 2009 World Heritage Fjords. We had our inputs to that. We, I think we were the only cruise line who supported the limitation on, on uh, nitrous oxides uh, uh, that that should be. So we are right there uh, uh, in what, we, what we're doing. So our further findings, so I'm very really, really proud of ourselves. Our further findings is that uh, uh, IMO 2020, of course, it uh, reduces the local pollution. But interestingly, and this may surprise some of you, the IMO 2020 will add to global warming. Now, it may surprise some of you. Uh, we do not believe that LNG is a solution for the future. People say, oh, it's just a bridge. It's a bridge to nowhere. As somebody says, it's like using song if you want as a shortcut to getting to Stockholm, <laughs> you know, in my mind. And batteries cannot solve the problem either. You hear some people claim, oh, we have batteries. 
and that saves 20% of the CO2 emissions. Their batteries were half an hour on the ships and they saved 20%. It's not true, and nobody challenges. So it's, 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 it's of a similar nature to our solar panels, but we don't say that the solar panels save 20% of our fuel. You know, if you should have a battery on a ship like ours, and you should have a battery to do five hours of steaming, only five hours, it will occupy 100% of the dead weight capacity of the ship. It, with current technology, batteries don't work for ships in international cruise. It's fine if you go from from uh, from Rotterdam to Nesodden, fine. And on, but but it does not work. You cannot hope it to work on on international international cruise. It's just bluff. So we don't. So we'd rather tell the truth than bluff ourselves to it. And if we see what, what uh, IMO 2020 and MARPOL has done, or will do, it's rather will do, I think, because we aren't January 1 yet. But if you look at different types of engines, we have current engines, I call them heavy fuel, that's the first bar, we call that 100%. Then you can put on scrubbers or exhaust or cleaning systems, or you can operate with um, marine gas oil, or you can operate with LNG. Those three new uh, fuel sources will reduce uh, sulfur emissions, uh, NOx, uh, NOx emissions, uh, uh, by by 80%. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not 100%, but heck, if you're going from, if you're doing 80% right now, I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't be hesitant, we should do it. Then comes the SOX, uh, and the HFO with scrubbers takes out 21%. Oh, it takes, takes out 80%. Uh, MGO and LNG are better. But again, if you take out 80%, I, that, I think that's good enough for me. But, uh, but then you can say the LNG, people, there's been a lot of talk about LNG. And I don't know how many of you, and sometimes we are confused. Because we talk about CO2 and greenhouse gases as if it is the same. Big difference. Big, big difference. And I, I read and people confuse it too. So LNG is uh, methane. And I, I don't know whether you, whether you know how important methane is for the environment. Methane is 84 times worse than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Did you know that? 84 times, that's on 20 years. So now I want to make a 20 years point, so I'd start with that. Over 100 years is only 28. It's not percent, it's times as bad. And the problem is that the LNG engines current, currently in production or in use, they don't burn all the methane, so it emits it all into the atmosphere. 1.8 to 3.1 percent of methane is unburned. Now there's hope about new technology, but current engines do this. So when you take all this into account, I'll have a chart which you can study at your ease, uh, then, then uh, the bar to the right, uh, second, second most to the right, said that the worst solution from total greenhouse gases is LNG. You didn't know that either, I bet. And then there's a hope that when you do new, new technology, you can get to 457. I'm almost there. So my suggestion for ports and authority, I think one should make sure that IMO 2020 is implemented. We don't have a choice. Uh, I, think, uh, I think scrubbers ought to be a closed loop. I think the World Heritage Fjords uh, uh, regulations with tier three, it's a good thing for, for everybody. If I was Oslo, I wouldn't, <laughs> it's fine, but, and I can say this because our ships meet it. So that for full, full disclosure. But why shouldn't we do it? Why not go clean? Implement shore power. It's, it's good, it might be expensive, but it's a good thing to have. Smaller ship. Uh, and then I said, and I've said before, one should regulate the demand through passenger taxes. Because, you know, there, there's, there's no reason that a city like Oslo should make itself available to everybody for no cost. Charge for it, make some money on it, 
put it in toilets or whatever, but not in toilets, but on toilets. <laughs> and then and then accommodate the use of carbon neutral fuels for the future. And in our mind, the real future looks like that. We have a design for it. I'm a member of a consortium that works on hydrogen uh, powered ships, which I think is the only possible solution for the future. Thank you very much.